have fun. I mean, you get to do stuff when you're single that you don't get to do in a relationship. You get to do things that are so awesome. Like, you can go on a mission trip randomly. You can do so many random things, and you don't have to worry about telling somebody else. And that's really important, especially with our growth in God. Because we grow so much with God in being single. And going on, in 1 Corinthians 7, 32-35, it says, I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about things of the Lord and how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about worldly things, how to please his wife, how to, and how his interests are divided. An unmarried and betrothed woman is anxious about things of the Lord and how to be holy in body and in spirit. But the married woman is anxious about worldly things, how to please her husband. I say, I say this for your own benefit, not to lay restraint upon you, but to promote good order and to secure your undivided, undivided devotion to the Lord. So, Paul's saying, it's alright to be single. Enjoy. You get to have a relationship with Christ that when you start getting in a relationship, it sort of gets put on the back burner. But it's so, so, so important to grow while you're single. Like, okay, I've been single out of all the years of my life, probably 20 years out of 22. And honestly, I've grown through with Christ so much in those 20 years that I would not trade that for the world. Because there are seasons in your life. There are seasons for you to start developing that relationship with Christ. Start getting more and more deep with Him. Then, there's a relation, then you start getting into the next season, which is sort of like a relationship. Anyone want to tell me what a relationship is at all? I will pick somebody up. You like a guy, a guy likes you, and you're dating. Sort of. I mean, that's one type of relationship. Is there another type of relationship?
There's two really I'm going to focus on tonight. There's casual dating, and then there's dating and dating. I know it's repetitive, but it, there is such thing as dating and dating. <sighs> casual dating, I'm going to give this a definition. It's sort of the world's view of asking people out on dates for one reason or another, but never really being intentional about it. It's sort of like you want to know this person like maybe a little bit more, but maybe I'm getting something else out of it. Maybe it's more physical. Maybe they're building me up a little bit, something like that. It's really not that shallow. It's very shallow. It's not really going on to the next step. Dating, 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 I'll be very specific about it. Dating, dating is when you have the intention of getting to know this person more, like you said, Seth, but to, the intention of it later on is to get married. It is leading toward marriage. And that is something that is so important that we sort of forget. Because, I mean, when you're, the difference is when you're dating, dating, you have to be mature about it. You cannot be a child about it. You cannot throw a hissy fit. Yeah, the girl broke up with me. No, the guy broke up with me. All drama and everything. There's going to be a little bit of drama. It's dating. Be mature about it. I, I've talked with so many people in my life that have come up to me and said, Austin, I'm struggling with this, that, or the other. And there's so much drama behind it. I'm like, guys, just be mature about it. Talk. Be honest and talk. But, I mean, maturity is a huge, huge, huge emphasis on this. But maturity is not how old you are. It's not if you're 21, 22, 25, 18. It doesn't matter. Maturity is how you act. Maturity is a huge thing in this. And the walking with God helps you mature. That's what being single is. That's what starting a relationship with friends helps you become. It helps you become mature. It prepares you for the next step. Just like there's different seasons like spring, summer, fall, and winter. There's different seasons in our lives. And so you go from being single to having a few relationships to starting dating. So it's a real huge emphasis. And it really shows our faith through it too. Because you have to date intentionally. Which means you need to be walking with God and He'll help you along. Um, how many people were here last week just by show of hands? Okay. Going to sum up last week in a few sentences. Last week we were talking about um, how our relationship with God needs to be first and foremost. Sort of like an intro to this week. But one of the analogies I used last week was a wheel. If God is at the center of your life, you can put a wheel together and get rolling. I'm going to add on to that a little bit this week. When you start rolling, you get rolling really good. No matter if you hit a bump or something, you keep on going. Now, all of a sudden, you have another wheel that comes up next to you and start rolling even more. And over time, you'll have a chariot start being built. Now, it takes time, and that involves dating. And sort of along the lines of when you should keep on building through all this, marriage becomes a part of it. But I'm going to hold off on that for a minute, if you guys don't mind. But in Matthew 22, 36 through 39, um, a man asked, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment of the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Hence, being single, being intentional, growing in God. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is just like, Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Now, love your neighbor as yourself. Seems sort of easy, but it sort of goes into the maturity thing at the same time. You have to be respectful of that person. You shouldn't, shouldn't, it shouldn't really have to be said, but treat them how you want to be treated. Like, if, let's say, say I ask somebody on a date, and if that person just says, yeah, sure, I guess, I mean, but they're not, but they're really in, behind closed doors, they're going, oh my gosh, why is he asking me out? This is freaking me out! If you do something like that, just be up front. Be honest. It means so much more and it helps you build a relationship that helps you build up over time. And it's so important. But, I mean, this sort of leads into a different thing. Make sure that, besides making sure that God, that you're seeking God in that relationship, there's sort of a third one that falls under the casual dating. And it's sort of dangerous for Christians and stuff like that. <coughs> Pardon me. And I promise I'll lose my voice this week. So, yeah, we're good. But, um, don't try the missionary day. Has anybody ever heard that term before? Um, can you? 
give us yes. a little info about Share dating, basically dating someone who isn't a Christian with the hopes that you can convert them. And honestly, I would even extend that, not necessarily in a missionary dating, but just dating someone with the intention of trying to change them in general. Yeah. So just be aware of that. <laughs> yeah. That's a good definition. I like that. But missionary dating is something that normally leads to some pretty bad things. And that we'll get into that more next week with me and Mallory talking and stuff like that. But missionary dating, if you, I, I strongly don't recommend it. I think, it's, but it is something people do. And if you can, if you want to try it, more power to you. But don't come to me for advice. I, not my strength. Not no. But um, it says in Second Corinthians. I know I'm saying in Second Corinthians a lot. Six fourteen it says. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness and lawlessness? What fellowship has light and darkness? In other words, it's saying something's going to have to give. And more times than not, that person's going to drag you down. And I, I missionary dated before. And it dragged me down a ton. Worst relationship I've ever been in. Don't know why I did it, but looking back at it, if someone would have told me about missionary dating beforehand, just please take my word for it. It's bad news most of the time. Now, if you can do it, I, I mean, I'm not to judge, but I wouldn't recommend doing it. But it's sort of not really a good idea. Let me just reiterate that. Now, last question: What is marriage? I know some girl wants to answer this besides these three. Somebody, come on. I will pick somebody. I've already done it before. Come on, somebody. Really? I, mean, I can stand up here and talk for some. Marriage is being united with somebody. If like taking two different lives and combining them to be. Travis. Anybody else want to add on to that? It's a covenant between the man, the woman, and God. Right. It's sort of <clears throat> it's sort of like another piece of the chariot. Um, like, if chariots for you guys that know, you have like this beam in between that's sort of like dating. But then you have a platform that somebody stands on top of. So like, you have a beam right here. This is the platform you stand on so that you don't fall off and stuff. Pretty much marriage is the platform because you build so much on top of it. And you can do gold cresting and everything else on top of it. It's really, really pretty. I know. I'm sorry, I'm from East Texas. We do have chariots. I'm a cowboy. Deal with my references. But, <laughs> but sort, of to, sort of adding on to what Travis said, in Genesis 2.24, yeah, I know. It deals it in the second chapter of the Bible. Oh my gosh, marriage is there? Yes. It says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So like Travis said, you become joint. You become a union. So, now, going to Ephesians 5. We're jumping all the way across the Bible. Ephesians 5, 25 to 33. And let me free warn her here. People take this scripture out of context. Ephesians 5, a lot. It's important to take it in context. So, just bear with me for a minute. So just warn you ahead of time. Husbands, love your wives. And aunt. Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by washing with the water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain, wrinkling, or blemish, or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. Now let me stop right there. He starts talking at the beginning about a man loving his wife, but then he jumps to the church. Because at the church, we are God's bride. It says it in Revelations. Just look it up if you don't believe me. And I, even if you do believe me, look it up anyway to just reiterate it. But, God wants up. <clears throat> yeah. Now was my voice again. But God wants us to love as men. He wants us to love our wives. 
even our girlfriends and stuff, the way that Christ loves the church. That means very lovingly and compassionately. Now let me pick back up. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own body. He who loves his wife loves himself. Sort of jumping back over to Matthew, sort of like Matthew, treat people the way you want to be treated. After all, no one has ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does with the church. For we are members of his body. Anyone have any questions about that so far? Once, twice, okay. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united with his wife, and the two will become one flesh. Paul, who's writing to the Ephesians, is quoting all the way back in Genesis. He knows it's that important. Just throwing that out there. This is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you must love his wife as he loves himself, and his wife must be respectful to her husband. Now, let me break that down a little bit even more. Guys, we're supposed to love them. Girls, I know from experience you guys can be a little sassy sometimes. We understand that. Trust me, us guys, we do. But work with us a little bit. Our relationship is about working with each other. Now, so. And trust me, I, I see there's a couple of relationships in here with some leaders and stuff like that. And it's really awesome to see how I get a little sassy or something like that every once in a while, but it's cool to see them work. And it's cool to see how they forgive each other sometimes. I mean, it's special. It really is. When you get that deep of an intimacy with a person, you really have a really cool understanding of that. And it's very special. But I'm going to jump to 1 Peter real quick. 1 Peter 3 7. This is another scripture I wanted to touch on today because it's going to help us out this week. And disclaimer beforehand, people use it out of context. I'm going to break it down. Give me a second. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives. Treat them with respect as a weaker partner. Now, when he says weaker partner, that is taken out of context all the time. I had to look it up all the way in the Greek. I had to ask Mike Glenn, the pastor of Brentwood Baptist. I asked him. I asked David Dyer. my pastor back home. I've done so much research on this, it's not even funny. When it says weaker partner, it's meaning physically. Because let's be honest, most guys are stronger than girls. Can we agree on that? I mean, if anyone wants to challenge me to a push-up competition, let's go right now. Let's go. All right, come on. But, and as heirs, you will gracious, sorry, I got to jump back. And as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life, so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Does that really need any explaining at all that part? I don't mind explaining it, but does anyone have a question about that at all? Okay. We'll touch on that a little bit more next week, but that's the gist of it. But it's really, really cool to see how that kind of stuff works. And it's really, really special. Marriage is the purest thing you can get to God's love. When a man loves a woman, that's sort of God's way of saying, hey, I want you two to be together, and this is a representation of how I love you. It is so special and so important, and that's why you get to see me be so passionate about it and be so excited, and that's why I don't mind spending six months prepping for it. That's why I love it so much, but that's why it's so special. And so the final season of winter is sort of like marriage. You have to build up to it. First you're single, which is spring. Summer, you start getting in relationships with some more fun. Fall is like dating. Marriage is like spring. It's like winter. You go through a full year of seasons, just like you do in life. It's just a fact. But keep God at the front of it, and it will work out so amazing. So awesome. And it's cool to see it, because I see it all the time with people that are around me and married couples. And I've seen it in a couple, in a couple of the couples that are in this room. It is awesome and I love it. That's why I get the fun. I have the fun time to talk to you guys. But we're going to break up into groups about five or six. Leaders, um, it's going to be just girl groups and just guy groups. 
And so I think we've got enough where we might be able to do two die groups. And pro leaders, raise your hand real quick, just so that. Okay. We should be able to break up into a few groups there. All right. So let's do about five or six. We'll come back together in probably about 20 ish minutes. Yeah. We'll do 20. Anyone have a problem with going over a little bit tonight, over what we normally do? This is easy. No, no, get out. Try to get out at 9.30. We'll probably be good now at like 9.45. About 15 minutes later. You guys mind that at all? Okay, sweet. Let's get to it.